In today's video, we will be talking about the genomic analysis of COVID-19 as of April 17th, 2020. For the full situation report and more regionally focused analyses, please visit our website at nextstrain.org. In today's report, we will focus on cases in the United States. So far, we have analyzed 1,347 publicly shared SARS-CoV-2 genomes. By comparing these viral genomes to each other, we can characterize how COVID-19 is moving around the world and spreading locally. We'll look at outbreaks in New York, California, the Midwest, and the Rocky Mountain West. We currently have sequences from samples collected in 36 states. While this data enables us to infer many useful characteristics of the outbreak and track its spread in real time, it's important to emphasize that our conclusions are limited by the available data. For example, the map shows relatively few sequences from the central United States. This is not because COVID-19 isn't circulating in these areas, or that these cases are not as crucial to understand. Rather, we just don't have much data available from these areas. Keep in mind that the size of each circle on the map indicates how much data is currently available from that area, rather than the true size of the outbreak. As you may have seen in the news this week, most of the viral samples from New York, which are colored in teal, group closely with samples from Europe, which are colored in gray. The New York clade is both flanked by and interleaved with sequences from Europe, which strongly suggests that most early cases resulted from introductions from Europe. The majority of the New York outbreak was seeded by European introductions, but the contextual sequences from other regions of the world allow us to see additional introductions into New York City. True to its cosmopolitan nature, there are cases in New York closely related to samples from other regions of the world. The early New York cases likely represent inbound transmissions. Later on in the outbreak, we see far more mixing between European and New York samples, making the direction of later transmission less clear. As we reported on last week, there is also evidence for recent reintroductions from the U.S. to Europe and Asia. Within New York City, we see little segregation of cases by boroughs. This is consistent with frequent mixing of cases across the city. In California, we also see evidence of multiple introductions between states. For example, cases from California span the genetic diversity of the tree, grouping together with samples from both nearby Washington State and New York. This is evidence for transmission between California and both nearby and distant states. With sequences from the Midwest, we see that cases from this area are spread evenly across the tree, rather than forming a series of tight clusters. This tells us that there are many independent introductions to these states, with several different transmission chains circulating simultaneously. For the Rocky Mountain West, there has also been several introductions. Zooming in on the map, we see a well-resolved transmission chain making its way across Idaho. Notably, the set of cases is flanked by a cluster of cases from Utah, demonstrating a close relationship between these two outbreaks. In conclusion, here are some takeaways from our report. Introductions from Europe seeded the majority of the New York outbreak, but there is also introductions from other areas of the world. As the outbreak has progressed, we also see evidence for reintroductions from the U.S. to Europe and Asia. The outbreak in New York City shows mixing of cases across all five boroughs. The outbreak in California is related to both nearby Washington State and distant New York. The Midwest outbreak is heterogeneous, with multiple transmission chains circulating in the region. The outbreaks in Utah and Idaho are closely related with ongoing community transmission. And the decisions made by each state profoundly impacts the fate of the others. Safely easing restrictions in any state will require coordinated containment with all states acting to protect each other. Here are some steps you can take. Practice strict social distancing, especially if you're in the vulnerable group. Wear a mask in public. Even if you're not super vulnerable, many people around you are. Follow these practices to protect others. Wash your hands like you just chopped a jalapeno and have to change a contact lens. Remember to stay home as much as possible, especially if you're sick. Be prepared with a few extra supplies in case you need to self-quarantine. And if you're an employer, encourage your employees to stay home when they're sick and financially support them to do so. Here are some other steps your officials can take. 
Some examples are to make testing free and broadly available, to put strong social distancing measures in place, to fund and implement extensive contact tracing and isolation efforts, and lastly, to financially support those impacted by social distancing measures. We would like to acknowledge the amazing and timely work done by all scientists involved in this outbreak. Check out our weekly reports, which are also available in different languages on our website.